you know, CBD. It had been studied for, for quite some time, but one of the major breakthroughs was parents who have kids who have this rare type of epilepsy that causes their kid to have you know, hundreds of seizures per week. Figured out that you could use CBD that's coming from a hemp product and actually go get those seizures from hundreds of seizures per week down to almost zero. Should I wear a lab coat and stuff as well or like? All right. Keep up with protocols. My name is Kevin Chen. I'm the CEO of Hisense Bio. I ended up dropping out of my master's degree at McGill uh, partway through to start this company. Our main activities are to create engineered strains of yeast that produce the same things that a cannabis plant produces, which are, they're called cannabinoids. So, um, welcome to our lab. There's a few machines. This guy in the corner there is really nice. $200,000, $300,000. The, the process all starts with synthetic DNA. It's not like we extract the DNA from a cannabis plant anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. So this is the DNA sequence from a cannabis plant. You send that to a company and the company will mail you the DNA and then install them into our yeast cells. And then these cells have this new ability to produce cannabinoids. Yeah, this is nice and cool. We can grow a million strains of yeast in a day. They can be replicated, we can store them and use them for manufacturing. One of the big things that's missing in a lot of cannabis products is that, you know, you grow a cannabis, sometimes it changes, sometimes there's different chemical compounds that come out. In a yeast cell culture, you control very precisely what temperature it grows at, how much is being stirred, everything that goes into it, everything that's come out of it. You're a lot more environmentally friendly, a lot less energy consumption. You can think about like growing cannabis plants, you have all this lighting, all this water. You know, that's the volume of water that we use in our, in our production. It's like exactly that volume. You do an extraction and purification, send to another manufacturer or to a formulator to combine with uh, an oil, for example, and then you can sell in the SQDC or wherever. It's a really, really fascinating process. And it's all just, just being discovered. So people are just figuring out, oh yes, we can use CBD to treat epilepsy, autism spectrum disorders. Uh, even with, with COVID, there's some studies going on now to the list gets longer all the time. It was a big decision to, of course, drop out of that, that school, but I think it was, uh, it's better. It's if I were to become a professor one day and then have a project by myself and then have students working on it, then maybe 30 years from now, we'd have a yeast that produces CBD and people will finally have treatments they need. But instead now it's like, oh, we're, it's been six years and we're almost there now. So this is, this is just called metabolic pathways. These are pathways that exist in living thing. Sugar comes in somewhere, goes through all this stuff and comes amino acids, fatty acids, whatever your cells need to grow. It's this spot here, which is where we start to produce cannabinoids. Melanocoe. You know, one day we'll, we'll add our own arrows to this map, which will show how you get from this compound to THC and to CBD. Uh, of course, there's the, the recreational part too, where people who want to use this stuff on the Friday night just for, just for fun too. <laughs> you can't ignore that, but we haven't seen uh, anyone really opposed to the idea. I think a lot of um, you know people don't think of it just as like, oh, people smoking cannabis is a bad thing anymore. We all need to support it you know, as a community or as the general public, kind of embrace these new ideas and to not prevent research just because you know our high school teacher told us not to smoke cannabis, right? <laughs> We're not there anymore.